But we are coming up yeah. this weekend, unfortunately coming up on yet another anniversary of the arrest of the voice of the voiceless, Mamiya Abu-Jamal, one of the most famous political prisoners here in the United States, former Black Panther, former journalist, uh, you know, the jailhouse lawyer of great repute and fame, uh, you know, really just uh, someone who is being very grossly mistreated. But nonetheless, we're going to talk about that. We are very happy to have his grandson, Jamal Jr., joining us here on the show. Thank you so much for being with us. Hey, how are you doing? Doing very well. Thank you and, and appreciate having you here. And Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. And, you know, as I mentioned, we're coming up in, in just about a day on uh, the anniversary of your, your grandfather's arrest. And, you know, for people my age, this was such a huge case. And I, I know all the details like the back of my hand. But maybe for some people, they haven't really heard who is Mamiya Abu-Jamal uh, and how did he end up being one of the longest serving political prisoners in the United States? Well, I think this is a case of, um, well, actually, at this point, you know, people who aren't in, getting into good trouble is really a way of suspending the revolution. And uh, Mumi Abu Jamal is a worldwide renowned uh, journalist, activist. Um, his commentaries, uh, there's people who enjoy his commentaries all over the world, and his. Uh, oh. Oh, did we lose the sound? We may. Oh, that was our. I think hello, that was hello. our fault. Oh, yeah, we got yeah, you. Yeah. I think, All right. Okay. Sorry. Continue. We the, had a little glitch, <laughs> as you were saying. No, no, no. Well, you know, uh, people around the world really appreciate uh, his critique of capitalism, and um, you know, just really fighting for the people. Uh, so, who who's Mumia? Like Mumia to Mumia can be a different thing to uh, depending on who we're we're talking to. But to many people I've talked to around the world, Mumia is an inspiration uh, to like everyone. And um, how he became the longest, uh, how he became 41 years in prison really comes down to, you know, how he really uh, defied a generation of uh, media, you know, who really wanted to discredit and um, like obstruct uh, black liberation movements. Uh, Mumi Abu Jamal, uh, e even incarcerated, he still uh, maintained. Um, you know, his innocence and, uh, you know, I guess his status as a revolutionary journalist and uh, speaking out. So uh, many people really believe that uh, be because he hasn't been quiet and because he supports so many people, he's still incarcerated to this day. How is his uh, health at this point? Uh, what's the treatment like for him? I mean, all these years behind bars, where you know where there's been various campaigns around uh, the issue of his health and, and how he's being treated behind bars. Well, um, it's it's uh, it's not good. Um, to, uh, right now, the current campaign is giving him a cardiac diet, uh, which uh, the jails have really re really been pushing back and fighting us back on. And the reason why he needs a cardiac diet is because he just survived um, heart surgery. Uh, I believe last year he just survived heart surgery. Uh, and uh, along with heart surgery, right, uh, he's had um, a severe case of uh, like eczema and he's had, um, you know, he's, he's had, he has a litany of health concerns, uh, which, which really tells a story of our elders being imprisoned for so long, right? Like the prison is not really designed for our elders to really, you know, uh, survive uh, their imprisonment because of so much, um, j j just so much behind the scenes and uh, the neglect, the neglect, the elder abuse uh, that our elders um, re really, really experience. You know, I, there's there's so much that could be said here about the deep injustices that the legal system has laid out in terms of, of keeping him in prison all these years. Uh, but talk a little bit about, if you could, the, the, some of that really, because I mean, it's, it's honestly astonishing, maybe it shouldn't be astonishing or surprising, but it is shocking, uh, the, from the original trial on, how much has been done to railroad him? Well, um, the original trial, so when, when, when I talk about my grandfather's case, 
I really like to talk about what's current, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, for 40 years, if, if Mumia would have been free because of the legality of his case, he would have been free a long time ago, right? Um, and when it comes to Mumia Abu-Jamal in the court systems, you know, racism really remains like the elephant in a room that nobody talks about, right? Nobody talks about um, the original trial court judge, Albert Sabo, who is infamous infamous uh, for his overt racism and sexism, right? Him saying, I'm going to help them fry the N-word. And this was reported by um, by a clerk, you know, who a court clerk, uh, Terry Morrow Carter, uh, and a fellow common plea, uh, court, I'm sorry, common pleas court judge. Uh, this was reported by them, you know, during the original trial. So for if a judge says, I'm going to help them fry the N-word, we know that, you know, racism is definitely in the courtroom, right? Uh, we also had, um, you know, uh, ADA uh, Jack McMahon. Uh, he made a policy clearing around like 1986, right? Uh, stating that, you know, getting a competent and fair and partial jury uh, is ridiculous. And, you know, if you do put Black people on the stand, make sure they, they're from the South and make sure they're um, older, right? Um, it, it's, it's a lot of like, you, you have to be, oblivious to the overt racism to even believe that this man should still be incarcerated, right? Um, so uh, in October, uh, we had a judge, uh, Lucretia Clemens. Um, she basically gave a 31-page uh, report uh, with an intent to dismiss. Uh, and the, 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 the reasoning was that, you know, she was, she was just basically saying that a lot of our stuff was, you know, um, it, it just, it just couldn't be proven. And a lot of our stuff, you know, like she was really hampering on the, uh, the defense in the nineties, you know, that she said that they didn't, um, they didn't do their due diligence, which we know was a lie. Right. And we, we, we're really just fighting to get the, to bring this guy home. And when it comes to, uh, you know, just him being railroaded by the um, the justice system, him being denied appeals, right? Uh, we we can talk about the not only Albert Sabo, but we can talk about the um, we can talk about the Ron Castile, you know, like uh, being being a person that really benefited in his original uh, in his original railroad court trial, being the person that you know rail, uh, that um, denies his his uh, appeals, you know, uh, for years and years. And that just came came about. But we can also talk about uh, in 2012, I believe, when they when they wanted, they didn't want to pursue the death penalty no longer. They put them on life in prison. Like, I've never seen anything like this. Like, Mumi Abu Jamal is a case, you know, that, that we haven't really seen uh, a state go through the lengths of keeping a man incarcerated. And of course, this isn't just any person to you. This is a family member. This is your grandfather. What's this like for your family? I mean, to have for all these years such a crucial, important person in your family be held for political reasons like this. Well, and and, and I'm, I think I'm echoing, um, I'm echoing many people whose families are um, incarcerated. Um, especially in this uh, this whole pipeline of prisons era, you know, uh, mass incarceration, it it really it really throws it it really disrupts your family, right? Because remember, like Mumia, um, he was a father, right? And you know, like my dad, who uh, bears you know, well, who bears uh, my name, right? my dad, you know, had to lose his dad at a very, very young age, right? All my life, you know, my grandfather has been incarcerated. And you know, I'm pretty sure many people out there feel the same way where they feel like it's unfair, you know, and when, when we're talking about people being incarcerated for so long, for like a really a case of reasonable doubt, if not like just a straight up, like, you know, a uh, mistrial case. And we're, we're, we're just it really hurts to see the state of Pennsylvania keeping my grandfather and behind bars for so long, right? And uh, it hurts me, it hurts my children, it hurts my cousins, right? And many of my family, you know, is really uh, trying their best, you know, to like live with the pain to have, you know, Mumia uh, behind bars, right? And 
I, I really can't explain in words the constant state of mild to deep depression that I experienced because my grandfather is still in bars. You know, I really appreciate you being willing to to share that. And I really can only only imagine. And I think for so many people, as you said at the beginning, Mamiya has been, you know, such a beacon, such a, a symbol of hope, even from behind bars, you know, about the, you know, what can happen in this world and how things can can change. I certainly may count myself as one of them when I first heard of his case in 1999. Uh, and, and I wonder now, for those who are watching, who are who are seeing this and wanting to learn more and, and perhaps even wanting to take action, uh, you know, where, where they can go, what they can do uh, to help in the efforts to, to free Mamiya. There's many campaigns um, that are helping in the efforts of uh, Mumia's freedom. Um, currently, uh, we're running a campaign um, titled uh, Love Not P H E A R. So it's Love Not Fear. And um, the, the reason why this campaign came to light uh, is because, uh, you know, we understand the fear that. Uh, the state fear that people have to live with in Pennsylvania, right? So, so we are asking people to come together in the love of Mumia, right, in the loves of incarcerated elders and political prisoners, and really challenge, right, and overcome the fear of uh, of state uh, retaliation. So, so it's uh, lovenotfear.com. We are actually doing a letter writing campaign. There's also um, uh, murals being erected all over the nation. Uh, the, le the letter writing campaign is actually going uh, directly to uh, Lucretia Clemens, right, and really um, challenging uh, her beliefs when it comes to Mumia Abu Jamal. Like, I believe that Lucretia Clemens uh, really believes that, you know, truth and reconciliation is to be had in uh, Pennsylvania. But when we're talking about Mumia Abu Jamal, for some reason, it seems like it's something that's political, more political than legal. So uh, the letter writing campaign is really asking uh, Lucretia to do the right thing, right? And really like demanding her to do the right thing based on, you know, what what she really believes in. Mm -hmm. Well, lovenotfear.com, people certainly could check it out if you're more interested. And Jamal Jr., just want to thank you so much for being willing to come on and let us know about Mamiya Abu Jamal, his history, his case, and what people can do to help. Copy. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.